Thank you. Uh, well, the next talk is a uh, presenting work from uh, Sven Schneider and uh, Lynn Lambers on evaluation diversity for graph conditions. And uh, Sven Schneider is, is giving the talk. Yeah, so welcome to my talk. Um, so I'm also talking about graph conditions as the previous speaker. My name is Sven Schneider and this is, as Fernando already said, joint work with Lynn Lambers. So uh, we are using a little bit of different notation for graph conditions. So I will just revisit our notation of syntax and I will just talk a little bit of the semantics of graph conditions. So here we have an example. Uh, on the left side, we have a very small graph with just two nodes and an edge between these two nodes. So what we are considering are just type graphs. So in this talk, um, nodes that have an, an A in their name are have, have type A and nodes that have a B in their name have type B. So uh, this is this graph on the left, and that graph on the left satisfies this graph condition on the right. This graph condition on the right says essentially that there should not be an A node that has a self loop or that does not have an edge to a B node. And that's why this graph here on the left satisfies this graph condition because uh, every A node, this is only the single one, uh, that has not a self loop and it has an edge to a B node. Another example is this slightly bigger graph here on the left and the same graph condition on the right. So this graph on the left does not satisfy this graph condition on the right, because for example, here is this A1 node that does not have an edge to a B node. So why are these graph conditions important? I mean, we just saw this previous talk where graph conditions were also used, but in general, they are used for a lot of different purposes. For example, to, to state graph queries for graph databases, or they are used to express state properties as in previous uh, talk also but they are also used uh, as application conditions or pre-post conditions in verifying graph transformation systems. And they are also used for expressing consistency constraints in graphs. So they are everywhere basically. So, and uh, the problem with graph conditions is that while they are very expressive, so they're as expressive as first logic and graphs, um, that also is a problem because their understanding and their correct evaluation and their specifications of writing such graph conditions down can be difficult or challenging. So. Uh, already the graph condition that we just saw is very small and simple, but yet it can be uh, challenging because there are these double negations and everything. So our main objective is to, uh, to support standard use cases for, for graph conditions, such as the validation of graph conditions. So to ensure that they uh, actually express what so the user intends to, the correct evaluation of graph conditions, so that tools evaluating graph conditions actually uh, provide the or return the, the correct satisfaction judgment. Also testing of, uh, of um, can, can be used, for example, to expose invalidity or incorrect evaluations. But there are also, of course, debugging of graph conditions where then uh, uh, reasons for incorrect incorrectness of uh, in, invalidation can be determined or repair of graph conditions can be performed uh, to, to actually ensure or obtain valid graph conditions. So to support all these use cases, what we want to do is actually what our basic idea is. We want to generate uh, models. So what we want to uh, generate are, is a suitable set of a suitable kind of models from a given graph condition. And these models can then be used for these use cases. For example, to show them to a user who then is able to determine whether uh, these models uh, contradict to his, uh, his intuition about what the graph condition should, uh, should express for example, for validity. So there are two questions here, of course. Uh, what is a, a suitable kind of a model? And which kind of set do we want to generate? So there are, of course, very different answers to that. Um, so just besides graph conditions, there are also other um, inputs that could be considered, for example, type graphs. So for type graphs, uh, one could think of uh, generating instance graphs or graphs that uh, are not typable or such a type graph as, as models that could be given to the user to understand that type graph better. But also for graph transformation systems, one could generate the, the entire state space uh, or just the uh, final outcomes or functional results of such a graph transformation system if that uh, graph transformation system generates such functional results or critical pairs as, as models to, to better understand that graph transformation and what's, what's actually expressed by such a graph transformation system. Just going back to graph conditions, what, what would be an obvious choice would be to, to generate graphs that actually do satisfy the graph condition or to generate graphs that are not satisfying the graph condition. Um, we did that already in the past, and we'll also come back to, to these two options in this talk later on. But we are now interested in actually uh, generating evaluations of graph conditions for varying graphs that actually um, very, uh, very detailed uh, explain how a graph condition can be evaluated. 
So that will be uh, the, the content of that talk here. So of course, kind of what to generate really just depends on the use case at hand and the application context and the user's needs. But uh, what I'm arguing is that these evasions are very helpful to understand uh, graph conditions and can also be used for these other use cases as well. So um, what, what are these evasions? We, we capture such evaluations of graph conditions using evaluation trees. And these evaluation trees just represent all possible steps uh, that uh, could be happening in, in an evaluation of a uh, graph condition with respect to a graph. So here we have this, uh, again, the same example that we have seen before. And uh, I will just show how uh, for, for this given graph um, and this graph condition and evaluation tree could be generated. So what we would do is we generate uh, these evasion trees uh, recursively. So we start with this outermost operator, this negation. Uh, then we consider this next existential quantification. Then we can, for this A node, find a match, for example, this A1 node here. Then we have the next uh, operator, this disjunction. And then we have two subconditions here, this existential quantification and this negation. Let's continue with, with the negation. Um, there's this just this one subcondition. And uh, what we then realize is for this um, given match A1 or matched node A1, we cannot extend that match to a match also of such an edge to a B node. So here we realize that there is no such match, which means that this subcondition is now not satisfied, which means that this subcondition with a negation is satisfied, which means that this disjunction is also satisfied. And here, what we realize is we don't even need to evaluate that other subcondition. So what we do is we keep it unevaluated as indicated by this U and also by that orange box around it. Um, since this disjunction is satisfied, we also know that this existential quantification is satisfied. And so that's why also we know that this negation is not satisfied. So this evaluation tree here would uh, be an explanation of why this graph here on the left does not satisfy that graph here on the right, uh, this graph condition on the right. But uh, this, this uh, generation of these evasion trees here is, of course, a very simple case because uh, in, in our, uh, in, in what we want to do is we don't want to uh, start with a graph already, but what we want to do is we want to generate graphs along with uh, such evasion trees. So, so now we know what an evasion tree is and what it looks like, but there are different evasion strategies that are relevant. So we are considering three different evasion strategies. The, the shortest circuit evaluation strategy um, has, has two cases. Basically, there are just two operators now that are relevant, the existential quantification and the disjunction. And both are very similar because basically they are both uh, like a disjunction just for the existential quantification. We don't know how many matches are to be, uh, can be found. And for the uh, disjunction, we know that there is a uh, finite number of um, subconditions and we just know how many there are. But basically we treat them very similarly in, in our approach. So to show that a, um, so that a graph condition is then not satisfied for the extension or the uh, disjunction case, what we do is we evaluate all matches and uh, all subconditions. So in the case that for, for non-satisfaction to show that they are all not satisfied or for satisfaction, what we do is we evaluate only one single uh, match or one single subcondition to show that the uh, graph condition is satisfied and keep all other subconditions and matches unevaluated. So as a regular expression, what we can say is that either all subconditions or matches prove non-satisfaction, or there's just one single uh, match or subcondition that shows satisfaction and the other um, matches and subconditions are not, not, uh, not evaluated, so they are kept unevaluated. Um, an example of such a, a resulting evaluation tree, that's what we just saw. That's, uh, that's the, 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 the good thing about these, this shortest circuit evaluation strategy is that we generate um, uh, fewer, um, fewer, um, fewer evasion trees. Um, uh, no, that we actually, what we do is we generate uh, more evasion trees, but they are smaller. Uh, and the, the, the other um, evasion strategies have a little bit different trade off as we will see uh, here. So there is also this uh, all circuit evasion strategy uh, where we, um, where we do something a little bit differently. So in this all circuit evaluation strategy, we uh, consider all matches and all subconditions of that graph condition. And that can be expressed as a regular expression much uh, more concisely. So there is this uh, F or T star. So that every graph, uh, every match and every subcondition is considered. So everything is evaluated and this unevaluated case does not, not happen. Uh, and in this case, what we get is that we have fewer but larger evaluation trees. Uh, so 
uh, an example for the, the given graph that we have seen before, that would then be this, uh, this evaluation tree here where all matches are considered and all subconditions are also evaluated. So before this, uh, this party was not evaluated, now it is. And also we find now a second match this, for this A2 node. Um, there's a third evasion strategy that I would like to present. This is the short circuit left to right evasion strategy. And in this uh, evasion strategy, we evaluate matches and subconditions sequentially from, from left to right, especially for the subconditions that that's the case. And uh, what we do is we, we stop uh, this evaluation once we found uh, such a satisfying subcondition. So just for the non-satisfaction, the same thing happens as before. We have to consider all matches and subconditions. But for the case of uh, satisfaction, now we can abort this evaluation once uh, we find a match or subcondition that, that proves satisfaction. So uh, especially this, uh, this short circuit left to right evaluation strategy is um, very important because it corresponds to what our tools would do and uh, therefore they generate, uh, this evaluation strategy is used to generate realistic evaluation trees. So in this case, what we could possibly do is uh, we see that uh, here this, this uh, first uh, subcondition is evaluated, but since it's not satisfied, we have to go to the second one and also evaluate that second one to determine satisfaction of this, uh, this uh, entire uh, of this, uh, this junction here. So these are the three evasion strategies that we consider and they are of course useful for different application scenarios where, uh, where the user has different uh, wishes on, on which kinds of evasion trees uh, are necessary, especially this short circuit left to right evasion strategy uh, may make sense when uh, testing an implementation of a, of a tool that evaluates graph conditions. So basically, uh, we consider a synthesis problem now, as, as indicated before. So, so what, is, uh, what we want to do is we take a graph condition and one of those three evaluation strategies that I've shown before, and then using our tool autograph, what we want to generate is a set of evaluation trees. So now the question will be, uh, what is such a suitable set as of evaluation trees that we want to generate? So um, there are a couple of um, constraints that we impose on this set S that we want to want to ensure. So for completeness, what we want to ensure is that uh, all possible evasion trees that could happen in reality for any any kind of graph, that they are all covered by, by one of uh, those returned evasion trees. So they must subsume one of those returned uh, evasion trees. For diversity, what we uh, uh, want to ensure is that uh, we have a kind of a minimal set of evasion trees that we generate. So uh, none of the, none of, uh, no, no two different return evasion trees contain each other. So, uh, so that we don't uh, have uh, too many elements in that set S uh, resulting in a minimal, minimal set S. And for compact, compactness, what we want to ensure is that the graphs uh, that are generated for these evasion trees along with those evasion trees that they are entirely used. So they should also be as small as possible. Just that uh, all matches that are recorded in these evasion trees uh, match the, the, the entire uh, generated underlying graphs along, uh, along the way. So with this specification here, with these three conditions, we, we obtain that this set is specified or ensured always to be finite, not empty and so unique up to isomorphism. Um, so, so we have a clearly defined set of evasion trees that is to be generated for graph condition and evasion strategy. Besides generating evasion trees, what we did in earlier work was that, that we generated minimal graphs that satisfy graph condition. So we, we also had a, a routine in autograph implemented that takes a graph condition and just returns uh, the finite set of all minimal graphs that satisfy graph condition. That, was, um, that, that, that operation is also very useful uh, because it's, it's used now in this generation of evaluation trees later on, but it had one problem. So uh, this work here can be seen as an extension thereof. So uh, let's go to this uh, simple example here, um, just showing kind of uh, what's the, the connection between inputs and outputs, which just without yet going into the details on how we generate these evaluation trees. So for the first input is again, this graph condition that we have seen before. And the second input is that shortest circuit evaluation strategy. So that's kind of provided by the user and uh, what, what our tool or our procedure would then generate is a set of evaluation trees with underlying graphs. So it would generate for, for this case, four uh, evaluation trees here on the right. And along with each of these evaluation trees, the graph here on the left hand side. So the first two lines, we have evaluation trees 
that show or demonstrate satisfaction. And the last two lines we have evaluation trees that result in non-satisfaction. Um, so uh, also, also what I want to say, these, uh, this previous approach uh, also allowed us to generate minimal graphs satisfying graph condition. But for this uh, given graph condition that we have here, this is um, unfortunately not was not uh, was not really very nice because uh, the the empty graph already is, is a minimal graph satisfying this graph condition. So before we would only generate this this empty graph and uh, no further information. So compared to just returning minimal graphs with this uh, generating generation of evaluation trees, we see that these evaluation trees capture at every nesting level how such a graph condition can be evaluated and provide much, uh, much uh, better insights into, into how such a graph condition um, can be evaluated. So here saying that, for example, the empty graph is a model and this graph is a model, but these two graphs would not be models of that graph condition. Um, just uh, as, a, as a step, I would like to uh, give an intuition about the individual steps of the procedure. Uh, that, that we use to uh, generate such evaluation trees. So we, we start with our input graph condition that we have seen before. And then in the first step, based on that evaluation strategy, what we do is we generate a so-called evaluation pattern that annotates all existential quantifiers in that graph condition with uh, labels. So here, this, uh, this um, false label, this exists false label, indicates that we can find a match for this A node but for this match, we uh, prove then non-satisfaction. This exists zero here means that we don't find a match then for this A uh, with this loop. And this exists true would indicate that we can find uh, a match of uh, this A to B, but, and that this, for this match, we can show satisfaction of that subcondition. Um, so these would be these evasion patterns. And using these evasion patterns, we then derive from them nested valuations. So these nested valuations then contain uh, exactly those um, existential quantifications for which matches are to be determined. So these exist false and these exist true. And all other operators of that um, evasion pattern or the input graph condition are then removed. So this nested valuation just captures uh, at each nesting level all parts of the all graph elements that are to be matched. And based on this nested valuation, we use our uh, procedure that generates minimal graphs of graph conditions, because this nested valuation is also then a graph condition, and generate here in this case, just this minimal graph of this uh, with this A and, uh, node and the, the edge to the B node. And uh, this is just the, the generated host graph that we uh, have now generated for this input graph condition. And uh, based on this evasion pattern, this minimal graph, and the evasion strategy, we are then able to generate this evasion tree, uh, where, where this is then the host graph. And the evasion pattern describes where matches or which subconditions are to be uh, satisfied and or non satisfied. Finally, what we do is we collect all such evasion trees that are generated by this procedure in, in the resulting set. Um, so, of course, it's uh, important to notice that uh, there are some steps in this procedure that don't, don't generate just a single result. So, for example, one graph condition can generate multiple evaluation patterns, um, and one nest evaluation can generate multiple minimal graphs, and uh, one for, for, for one graph here can generate multiple evaluation trees. So that's why this uh, resulting set is not always a single. So, to, to sum up, um, I would like to, um, yeah, so, so what, what our intention was, our objective was that we wanted to support the, the standard use cases for the validation, testing, and debugging of the graph conditions. And for that, what we intended to do is we, we want to generate um, representative models of our graph condition. And in this talk, uh, we, we considered evaluation trees to capture evaluations of graph conditions. Uh, that capture uh, how such a, um, a graph condition can be evaluated every, at every nesting level. And what we proposed is a procedure that generates finite, complete, and diverse set of such evaluation trees that can be used then for these standard use cases and uh, can be inspected. Um, so uh, the, the point is that uh, also all these evaluation trees then thereby symbolically describe all possible evaluations of the given graph conditions, which is also a very nice result. And um, this, uh, this procedure now returning evasion trees also thereby improves our previous support for, for graph conditions, 
where we only uh, generate minimal graphs, which is not always the, the does not always provide the best results. So uh, what we want to do with this um, uh, generation of evasion trees also in the future, what we want to do is we want to extend it because now we, we didn't consider all evasion steps that are performed for such a graph condition. For example, graph pattern matching is not part yet of these evasion trees, but it could be extended in that direction. And also what we want to do is we want to apply and extend our approach. On the one side, we could try to uh, uh, extend into the direction of testing for graph transformation systems where we could analyze whether where these graph conditions then could be application conditions or pre-post conditions, uh, as, as we have seen also in the previous talk. Um, and, and as last point here, uh, what we want to do is uh, we want to also uh, systematically generate larger evaluation trees and larger graphs that satisfy or do not satisfy the graph condition based on these evaluation trees. So taking one evaluation tree, we can just generate also larger evaluation trees that uh, contain more matches and can also be then used for, for example, uh, efficiency testing of um, evaluation engines. Yeah, thanks for your attention.